We do not care. Get ready to fly. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Zach Renoll, and welcome back. If this is your first time tuning in, I cover every single Winnipeg Jets game. I do not expect it to be so bright. The lights were too bright. Man couldn't handle it. No. Um, honestly, not upset. Not upset at this game. Actually, I'm kind of happy about it, in a sense. Um, going into this game, without Gabriel Velarde, Mark Shifley, Josh Morrissey for two and a half periods and Connor Hellebuck, I'm like, well, this is going to be a 6-1 loss, especially after we just lost our three goals or less streak of 35 games yesterday, uh, the other night. I expected this would be a loss. I was like, we are going to get absolutely stomped. The narrative is going to be like, holy shit, Winnipeg's so good defensively, but cannot contain the least forwards. Turns out we can. Turns out we can. I'm... I'm extremely impressed with this defensive, the defensive abilities of this team tonight. I am absolutely blown away by it. Like, am I disappointed in a loss? Yeah, we deserve two points tonight. I can actually confidently say that. But it didn't happen, and we got goalied. But we got goalied in a way that means that we still walk away with one point, which in my, in my opinion is failing upwards at, that, at, the, at this rate. Also, what an, what an effort by Brassois today to get... Uh, honestly, he kind of he, he gets a sixty minute shutout, but then loses it in overtime. It doesn't really matter. He played amazing, but yeah, let's get into this. So, first period's fine. Um, first two periods are both fine. Honestly, we can group them together because we know what comes between the first, uh, the second, and third period. But first two periods are fine. It it is what it is. Honestly, the there's a bunch of good hockey back and forth. Jets had a Jets. I didn't like the officiating. They 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 tried to even it up at the at the end, which annoyed a lot of these fans. But it's like if the Jets take the first five penalties of the game, do you think that they're gonna take six? And I don't. I think it's just normal. Like you kind of put yourself in a corner because the Toninato penalty and the Dylan penalty are fine. The Toninato holding penalty is a bad call. The tripping is marginally okay. The problem is, is that if you re if you look at the play in question, if you focus it on where the guy's hitting him in the skate, yeah, it's trip. But he's also just losing the puck on his own, so it's technically it had no impact on the play. He got stripped of the puck already. It doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but it then does matter later on when they board Dylan Sandberg from behind and we're like, hey. Then Cali Arnco trips uh, Appleton later, and, and it's like, yeah, no, you gotta call that. I wish Morgan Bear knew how to raise the puck. Otherwise, this game could have been over without overtime. But nonetheless, Samsonov was fun tonight, honestly. He was really good, which was annoying because half the times we made him look good. Uh, if Rasmus Kupari could shoot anywhere other than the chest, I'd be really happy. Nina Ryder misses a chance to give Nate Schmidt a 1T, which is something I can't believe I'm saying. But that one-timer could have absolutely stole, like sealed this game away. Um, the penalty kill was exceptional tonight. Uh, five for five in the penalty kill contained Nylander, Matthews, and Marner. I didn't. It, they didn't feel like they knew how much give and take for that. And I'm extremely impressed. The penalty kill is flying upwards. It's great. Now, with that being said, between the second and third period, what time is it? Moose watch. <laughs> Moose watch and oh boy, oh boy, this team is hitting record lows. Now tonight they might win. They're currently tied one one with the Chicago Wolves as of recording. They might have lost by now, but they lost earlier. They lost yesterday two to one. The only goal coming from our boy Vili Hanela. The Moose are just bad. I can't say it enough. The Moose are just not a good hockey team. I I don't expect anything from this team, and I just can't. They're just not good. Like, this is historically bad. They are 1, 12, and 1. It's bad. Here's the one goal clip, though, of Vili Hanela. Reaction here. He'll work down in behind the net on his back end. Goes out wide for Chibrikov. To the line. Hanela, one-timer. He scores! Vili Hanela with 26.5 left on the clock. And the Moose have a chance. They certainly do, Daniel. That was a real nice play by Kyle Capobianco. 
One thing we talk about him is his offensive ability. He gets it up, brings the puck into the zone, gets it over to Chibrikov, who gets it up and over to Villainola, who one times that right to the back of the net. Nice, beautiful goal. And no surprise, Jeff Mallott in front taking away the... Awesome. Good to see. Good to see. And this is how you fucking can oh, Come on! Yeah! Good morning, afternoon, and... My turn, jackass! Sweet! Get the fuck out of here! Jets lose 1-0 to the Leafs. Um, Shifley's out. Velarde's out. Morrissey played 10 minutes. Hellebuck wasn't playing tonight. Not much you can complain about as a Jets fan. You're able to get one point. Um, took a lot of penalties. Didn't agree with all of them. Um, we, it's fun. Like, like the Leafs, although I, I was, I mean, I'm happy with our penalty kill. We were able to kill five penalties tonight. Um, got a few power plays at the end, uh, weren't able to do anything on them, which didn't surprise me as again, most of our power play was out. Um, Brassois played well. Uh, funny thing is now like <laughs> Toronto's going to like, because Samson have had like one like decent game against a highly nerfed, uh, Jets team. I can't wait till they think that now Samsonov is the answer and we'll just fix all of the goaltending problem problems they have. So that's funny. We revisit this uh, Saturday. I'll most likely be watching the WWE Royal Rumble, so probably not going to be watching that game, but hopefully we get the win then, so back to Zach. Um, we go third period onward. It's fine, honestly. Game happens. I was just really stressing. I got so happy when we got that power play because I knew that we, that we were most likely going to just get a point, and I was okay with that point. Obviously, my reaction later... So the goal against is is upset, is kind of upset. But honestly, I'm just like, you know what? Point's a point. Needed the point because keeps us well on pace against uh, Colorado, who's kind of trying to knock on our door, but they also have two more games played than us. So that's good. But yeah, I know. Um, let's look at the women's side of hockey quickly. Women! 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 So, women's side of hockey. There was a couple fun games here. I gotta, gotta get the laptop out for this, actually, now that I, I mention it, because there's actually two games going on right now, and if I my timing is correct, they should be over by now. Let me double check here. So, um, the game that we have highlights for is Ottawa and Toronto. Ottawa won three to one, and actually Ashton Bell, who's from Manitoba, leads uh, PWHL Ottawa in points with four assists. She got a including one on the empty netter, which took a, you know a kind of weird turn. Um, Montreal and Minnesota are tied one one in the third period, and Boston just beat Ottawa three to two. Let's see, did 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 uh, Ashton Bell get a point? No. Damn shame. Uh, but nonetheless, um, honestly, again, I can't say. I think six teams is the perfect amount of teams right now. Uh, it's not It's it's not really imbalanced. Toronto doesn't have a very good PWHL team, but they did. They And they nearly, they struggled. They've definitely struggled. Like, if I look at the standings here right now, the standings are PWHL, um, Minnesota has 12 points. Montreal has 10 Um Ottawa has eight, and New York also have eight. Uh, and then Boston and Toronto are tied with five. The catch is, is that Toronto has played seven games, and Boston's played four, and it's a 3-2-1-0 point system. Yeah, not it's it's not good. It's not great to for PWHL Toronto, but there's obviously a lot of time left still in the season. Here are the highlights from the last game. Ottawa trying to get a change in there, but they had a little bit of pressure. They couldn't set up. And Razova looked to get that off. Or rather, it was Gilmore. And now a chance. How shoot? She shoots! She scores! Howard does it! Her nurse redirects over to Fast this time. And now another chance for Ottawa. As that pass 
gets turned over. Bouye feeds it. There it is in the front. They score. It was that fast. And Ottawa retakes the lead. Yeah. Um, and then we go into overtime. Morrissey leaves game due to low rider injury. It looked like he blocked it shot really bad. So I'm hope I'm hoping it was just like a bruising and they're just like precautionary. I feel like a lot of the what they're doing right now for the injuries is they're just leaving guys out because of precautionary reasons, which is good. Oh god, don't show me that. It's a shame that they don't score on that Morgan Barron Adam Lowry highlight. Because right after Morgan Barron doesn't score two goals, he gets slew footed from behind. On a real bad, like, it's a it's a dirty slew foot from behind, which is unfortunate. Also, Keith benched his top power play unit, which is crazy, because obviously he did not know how bad the Winnipeg Jets penalty kill was. Um, but anyway, we go into overtime. Um, Jets have a power play to start, but also they have no killers on. Like, honestly, their best look was right after it ended, where Ehlers did a beautiful toe drag on dressing somebody and just couldn't beat Samsonov with it. Uh, and then Matthew scores the overtime winner reaction here. Here's Robertson trying to twist away from by injuries i'll take a point and then that's it honestly but jets walk away with a point totally okay with that they go they go two tough games on the road um where they lose their they got three they had three games on the road which were obviously going to pose threats to them because they were kind of a more vulnerable state they get the win in ottawa in overtime they lose all their streaks in boston which also takes off some of the pressure like now it really has to reset their mindset they have to still, which means, and they've still been able to play that, obviously, defensive style game. And they get an overtime loss here. So they got three points in three games. Can't hate it. Uh, yeah, no. It was good on the Leafs, though. Like, honestly, the Leafs normally get in absolute dog fights. And it was kind of, I bet as a Leaf fan, it was probably interesting. It was probably a boring game for a lot of Leafs fans. But also, it means that their goaltending played well, which does not happen often. They're... They're running a tandem of Jones and Samsonov. It's a shame here because I think actually on the overtime goal, if I'm looking at it right now, it just kind of hits Matthews. Like, the shot isn't even there. It just it just goes off his body. But, yeah, no. Jets will take the overtime loss. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, we'll be back on Saturday. Saturday. Long, long freaking wait. Hopefully some of the Jets will be back for that, though I imagine they won't be because the Jets are just like, we don't care if we lose to the Leafs two, two in a row because... We're like in third in the league. Just keep the boys healthy. But yeah, no. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Saturday. One, Nicole Anders. Chips a throw, gets around, and he shoots and scores. What a goal.